Well, hey guys, today we're going to be talking about ketoconazole for hair growth. It's no secret that hair loss sucks. It's a really common issue affecting both men and women, specifically a type of hair loss called androgenetic alopecia, one of the most common types of hair loss out there. It's called androgenetic because to a certain extent, it's related to your genetics, but it's also related to androgen hormones, which we all have, the male sex hormones. What ends up happening is that the hormones signal to the follicle to kind of make it regress and turn into a baby hair. It's called miniaturization. So basically, it turns into a little vellus hair, like peach fuzz. Men tend to have, you know, receding of their hairline, whereas women often will have a widening of the central part initially. Androgenetic alopecia is also a lot more common in women who are dealing with a hormone condition called PCOS. They have androgen hormone issues going on that signal to their skin, to their hair, to the rest of their body and cause issues. So it's often more common in women with PCOS, but regardless of PCOS, you can be dealing with it. It's really common, very, very, very distressing. I mean, any type of hair loss is distressing. With androgenetic alopecia, it's a progressive type of hair loss. There's no cure for it. The treatments that we're gonna cover in this video are all about controlling it, limiting it, suppressing it, but they need to be continued in order to maintain that suppression, in order to maintain control and keep the hair that you have. Now, the good thing about androgenetic alopecia or a way to look on the bright side is that it's a non-scarring hair loss. When I say there are a lot of different types of hair loss out there, we typically classify hair loss into scarring and non-scarring. Scarring hair loss is just what it sounds. The hair follicle gets scarred down and once that scar forms, there's no going back. You cannot regrow a hair in that scarred follicle. Whereas a condition like androgenetic alopecia, where the follicle is not scarred, it's just making a little peach fuzz hair, it can be brought back to life by topicals and medications. Now, when it comes to androgenetic alopecia, the most evidence-based treatment that you can buy over the counter without a prescription is going to be minoxidil, often sold by the brand name Rogaine, but there are a lot of other brands out there. Minoxidil, 5% can be used in both men and women. Frequently, minoxidil is marketed to women in a weaker strength because women can respond to the weaker 2% strength, but often they don't. The 5% can be used in both men and women. Now, minoxidil, if you've ever used it, um, initially it makes some of the hair shed more. That's totally expected. And then with time and continued use, you start to get an increase in hair growth and density. It can be irritating to the scalp. And again, you have to continue using it in order to maintain the results. And a lot of people just find that it's kind of a pain to do. They don't care for it. So they abandon it. They're not interested in it. It's safe. It's effective. It has a lot of research to back its efficacy for androgenetic alopecia. But again, it's not a, a miracle worker and it doesn't cure this condition. Then you have something called uh, spironolactone. That's an oral medication that can be prescribed to women, not to men, because it has you know, some effects that men may not be so happy with. But for women, it can be prescribed to help limit that androgen signaling at the hair follicle. And especially in women who have PCOS, they often can get some improvement in their androgenetic alopecia with spironolactone. And spironolactone also can target and improve some of the other hair issues that women with PCOS often deal with, namely hirsutism, hair growth in a male pattern. Then you have, um, for men, oral finasteride. Oral finasteride is very effective. It's a prescription medication, but it too has side effects that many men are not interested in. Those side effects are not acceptable. They can have some sexual side effects. So, you know, that's not always something people want. Not to mention people are not always so enthusiastic about taking oral medications. Speaking of oral medication, um, there's been a boom in interest amongst dermatologists uh, over the last, I would say, year, truthfully, in the use of oral minoxidil for androgenetic alopecia. Now, minoxidil, Rogaine, is what you put on your scalp, but it's also a pill you can take by mouth for blood pressure. Um, and it grows hair pretty, pretty effectively. Uh, unfortunately, it does have side effects. So we try and go at the lowest dose possible, but it's actually very effective for uh, many people with androgenic alopecia. Unfortunately for women, uh, they often experience facial hair growth on it. So it's all about, you know, trying to get the dose just right so that they respond with their hair on their scalp and not 
on their face. Uh, it also can have some other side effects, which I cover in a video all about oral minoxidil. So definitely check that out. If you're dealing with hair loss, you need to learn about oral minoxidil so that you're you know, more informed about the treatment options out there. But we're not gonna dive into that too much in this video. What we're here to talk about today is something that is kind of underrated, not a miracle, not gonna cure the androgenetic alopecia, might not even make a huge difference to you in terms of what you see with your eyes, but might actually support improvement in androgenetic alopecia, especially when coupled with evidence -based, more evidence-based, I should say, treatments like what we've just discussed here. And that is ketoconazole. Now, ketoconazole, is an antifungal medication. It can be applied to the skin to treat a variety of skin conditions. There's also a pill form of ketoconazole, although it has some undesirable side effects. But today we are specifically talking about applying ketoconazole to the scalp uh, for, for scalp health and for androgenetic alopecia. Now, what you'll come across is that ketoconazole in a shampoo form is a treatment actually for dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis. Dandruff is under the umbrella of seborrheic dermatitis, a chronic inflammatory skin condition that you know can affect the scalp. What happens is there's a little yeast that lives on our skin, especially in areas where we have a lot of oil glands like our scalp. And that yeast thrives off of breaking down the sebum, the oil that our scalp produces. It breaks it down and in doing so, it creates a lot of inflammation. And the response of your skin and the follicles is to make the scaly flaky stuff as well as um, redness and irritation. That inflammation from seborrheic dermatitis may negatively be impacting your follicles. And if you're somebody whose genetic background constitution is one that you know, you're going to go on to have androgenetic alopecia, having that chronic inflammation from seborrheic dermatitis poorly controlled seborrheic dermatitis, aka dandruff, may actually be you know, pushing the limits of that follicle and, and creating a tipping point, so to speak, that really favors the miniaturization process. So the ketoconazole controls the amount of that yeast. It's also anti-inflammatory. But here's the kicker. Some uh, laboratory evidence suggests, you know, albeit cells in a dish type type studies, suggest that ketoconazole might actually inhibit that very potent form of testosterone, dihydrotestosterone. It might actually inhibit its effects on the follicles. So remember, I said the androgen part of androgenetic alopecia has to do with the male sex hormones that we all have, men and women both have. Um, and basically, at the level of the follicle, the most potent form of, of, of those androgen hormones, dihydrotestosterone, it's what it's what leads to miniaturization of the hair follicle. So things that suppress that or limit its formation uh, can potentially, you know, obviously be helpful for androgenetic alopecia. I mean, that's how, that's how the medication finasteride works to treat androgenetic alopecia in men. But applying it to the scalp, not only may be helpful for men, but also for women. You know, if you're contemplating pregnancy, finasteride is, is a no-go, but actually women can be prescribed it. Anyway, all that to say, you know, whenever we have the opportunity to put something on our skin as opposed to taking it in orally, it tends to, it tends to be a lot better in the long run in terms of fewer side effects. You're not risking exposing your entire body to something. So does it actually work for androgenetic alopecia? There's, there, is, there are some clinical studies looking at topical ketoconazole for improving androgenetic alopecia. Not a ton of literature out there, truthfully, not, not robust research. Uh, it, it does appear as though it can improve hair, uh, hair density and hair, hair thickness. Now, that, those studies have been done in men. So if you're a woman with androgenetic alopecia, there's no guarantees that it's gonna work. But in my opinion, it's definitely worth a shot because ketoconazole shampoo, you can buy over the counter, and we'll talk about how to use it and the drawbacks of it, but it's generally pretty well tolerated, it's safe. And it's like, you know, you're probably more comfortable washing your hair um, with some frequency. Uh, so it's a lot, in my opinion, easier to incorporate into your routine if you're motivated, uh, as opposed to, you know, some of the other topicals you may hear about that are sort of alternatives. And by that, I mean things like rosemary oil um, or topical caffeine. Uh, these are solutions that you'll find in a lot of hair growth serums for which, you know, the efficacy of those is kind of very questionable. Um, and, you know, you gotta be 
keeping up with putting those serums in your scalp. And, you know, I've tried those just to see how, how they, you know, do. And I personally, you know, I don't deal with androgenetic alopecia, but I personally find that a lot of these scalp serums, they start to become very cumbersome and, you know, they make your hair look kind of greasy. And so I, you know, I empathize with anybody who's tried those out and, and you know, bailed on them because they're just a lot to keep up with without knowing for sure if they're actually doing anything. Whereas I find, you know, the shampoo, at least for me personally, for a lot of patients, is a little bit more realistic for incorporating into a routine. And you know, everybody's, everybody's going to vary in terms of what what they're able to keep up with. Now, you can buy ketoconazole shampoo without a prescription at 1% strength, Nizoral. Um, you can also be prescribed it by your doctor at 2% strength. I often prescribe 2% ketoconazole shampoo for people who are dealing with dandruff. So, you know, you, you may have a prescription there. But in terms of the 1% over the counter versus the 2% for specifically improving hair thickness, density, you know, helping improve scalp health as it relates to androgenetic alopecia. There's really no data out there comparing the two. In my experience, the 1% can be helpful. A lot of people observe improvement with the 1% that they buy over the counter. So is ketoconazole like going to be your hot ticket item for hair growth, hair density, for improving your androgenetic alopecia? I would set very realistic expectations with this. You're probably not not going to see a huge difference, to be frank. It's definitely not going to be as effective as if you, you know, stick to using minoxidil. In terms of the results that you get with minoxidil, Rogaine, the topical stuff that you can buy without a prescription, you're going to see more, more of an effect, albeit it's going to take some time with minoxidil, than you're likely to see with ketoconazole shampoo alone. Now, that being said, I do think using them together if you're motivated to. I really think that's where it's gonna shine the most for you. I look at ketoconazole shampoo as playing a supporting role for you know scalp health and for helping maintain the health of the follicle as best you know, as you're able. It's safe to use. It's uh, safe to use in pregnancy, although of course always discuss with your treating healthcare provider. How should you use this shampoo in your routine? Now, everyone's hair type and scalp needs differ. Some people, like myself, need to shampoo their scalp on a daily basis. Like I, if I don't shampoo my scalp, it's gonna get oily, it's gonna get greasy, and I'm gonna get dandruff. And no, you can't tra train your scalp to make less oil. There's no, you know, this is not riding a bike, there are no training wheels. You, you can't train your scalp to make less oil by changing up the frequency of shampooing. Shampooing daily is not realistic for everyone, however. You know, some people, that's just too much. Doesn't do well for their hair overall. So you kind of have to pick a frequency that's going to work for you. At minimum, once a week for shampooing in general. But if you're going to incorporate the ketoconazole shampoo, at minimum, once a week. Um, and here's the thing, in order for this to work, what you want to do is you want to get a good lather. You don't need a huge, huge volume. As a side note, you just need a small amount. That goes with any shampoo, but this shampoo, you only need a very small amount to get a good lather all over your scalp. I suggest using a shampoo brush. I bought one and I've been using it for a few years off of Amazon. They're very inexpensive. And what I like about these is they help to distribute the shampoo all over over the scalp um, and it helps you use less shampoo. It also helps, it has a side note, if you have hand eczema, it cuts down on you having to touch shampoo, which can aggravate hand eczema. So I like that as well. Now, um, once you lather it there, this is where people go wrong. You actually need to let it sit in the scalp and sink in there for about three to five minutes. So that might be annoying for you, but it's, it's worth doing the full five minutes, in my opinion, because you really want it to sink down into the scalp and really effectively get in there. If you rinse it off too quickly, it's not going to work. So let it sit on there for a full three to five minutes. You might, you know, lather it in there and then put a shower cap on um, and then, you know, do some more, whatever the rest of your shower routine is, and then end your shower by rinsing it out, you know, taking the shower cap off and rinsing it out. You want to make sure you rinse it out for sure. But it definitely needs to sit on there for about three to five minutes. And you can do this scalp treatment once a week, up to three times a week. Doing it on a daily basis is certainly fine. One issue you may run into though with ketoconazole shampoos, whether it be the over-the-counter Nizoral or the prescription stuff, is that they can be pretty drying. Especially if you have a more textured hair type, they can be pretty drying. So you've got to factor that in for your hair, what it's going to tolerate. It can be drying. So what I suggest is that after you rinse it out, you 
um, follow up with conditioner to the strands, especially if you have longer hair to, to the ends of your hair. Now, some people, you know, have really short hair, you may not need to do the conditioner. Um, it's going to be more of an issue, you know, if you've got longer-ish hair um, or a lot of hair volume. Or if your hair texture and pattern is more curly, you may find that you need to use um, some type of moisturizing hair mask to really help to neutralize the charge left behind on the hair strands that uh, happens from shampoos, especially harsher ones. So the conditioner helps neutralize that charge and it'll help keep your hair more manageable. Like anything with androgenetic alopecia though, you need to keep this in your routine in order to maintain the scalp health promoting benefits um, of, of it. So you can't just use it for a couple of weeks and, and you know it's a one and done thing. Unfortunately, you do need to continue using it um, in order to maintain that, those benefits. Now, like I said, don't expect a miracle with this. I view it as playing a supportive role. I really think if you want to go all in, there are a lot of different things that you can incorporate into a scalp health routine that are evidence-based. You know, doing this and minoxidil, which you can buy over the counter, um, that those two together may be better than minoxidil alone. It's certainly gonna be better than ketoconazole shampoo alone because minoxidil, again, is the most evidence-based treatment out there. Maybe you're motivated to use some of these serums that you can buy, like um, rosemary oil or caffeine. I also have a video, as a side note, on topical melatonin, some really promising research there, although more research is needed for androgenetic alopecia. So maybe you're you know, using some hair serum that you've purchased and you're motivated to continue using it. You accept the fact that it's maybe not the most evidence-based thing, but you're excited about the preliminary research and you wanna give it a go. Um, it, it may have a better chance of working alongside ketoconazole. You're getting the anti-inflammatory effects, you're getting the reduction in malassezia, which breaks up the sebum and it creates more inflammation. You're also getting, you know, potentially a DHT blocking effect. So you may get better results. You also may want to combine this with uh, low level laser therapy, uh, which is evidence-based for improving androgenetic alopecia. It definitely can help, especially, you know, some people fail minoxidil, Rogaine. It's thought that they don't have the enzyme necessary to convert minoxidil to its active form. And in those folks, a lot of times they, they get better, they get good results using low level laser therapy. And many people get uh, results with minoxidil and then they try low level laser therapy along with that, um, you know, at home devices even, and they get even better results. So if you add in the ketoconazole shampoo, that might just be another thing to help overall support scalp health. So in summary, ketoconazole holds a lot of promise for helping maintain the health of the hair follicle. And if you're someone who is predisposed to androgenetic alopecia, it may help in slowing the process. And it may also help in supporting the results that you get with other more robust evidence-based treatments like minoxidil. All right, y'all, that's what I wanted to say about ketoconazole. I hope this video was informative to you. Like I said, hair loss is really common. It's very distressing. And, you know, it's an area where you have to be careful because, because it is so distressing. Um, you become vulnerable to, you know, sort of predatory marketing and sensationalized claims, which in this day and age with social media, exaggerated claims are what get views and traction. And just be aware of that. You know, not everything that you're seeing on social media is necessarily evidence-based. Uh, you know, a lot of things people are doing. So I really hope this video was informative to you and kind of distilling what you might expect with ketoconazole shampoo for androgenetic alopecia, not a miracle worker by any means, but definitely has some evidence behind it for supporting scalp health. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in hair loss, I encourage you to check out my hair care playlist. I have lots of videos on all types of hair loss, especially androgenetic alopecia and the different treatments that I mentioned in today's video. And on the end slide, I'm going to link one of my recent video on hair loss supplements to avoid. So definitely watch that so you don't fall victim to, you know, sensationalized supplement claims regarding hair loss. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.